Hey everybody. Sorry I haven't made any videos this week, so I'm going to do something a little bit different. Um, I was working on more uh, common LNN bullshit, these nine Narnia and this Terrell 03 and stuff, but it's just got to the point where it was just so stupid I couldn't even make the video. I just felt dumber for even trying to explain some of this shit. So I um, got a lot of requests for more Army stories. So I'll go ahead and throw one of them out there. So I'm going to be down for about a week, maybe two. I've got some surgery coming up, and hopefully that goes okay. So uh, let's see if we can come up with another funny-ass Army story. I'm not going to go into all, like, all the serious type shit or talk about tactics and things like that. I'm just going to tell you just, just some funny stuff that happened. Okay, uh, this one takes place at uh, NTC. This is uh, Fort Irwin, California at the National Training Center. For those of you who aren't in the military, that's where... The Army goes to train for desert warfare. Uh, back in the late 80s when I went, it was uh, mainly Warsaw Pact versus NATO type warfare stuff, you know, Soviet you know, equipment. They actually had some Soviet equipment out there, you know, for us to identify, you know, see what a Soviet tank looks like and everything. And they would do mock-ups on American equipment to make it look like, you know, uh, Soviet type equipment and stuff like that. And so you, it's basically a, you know, mock fake war you go to. And it, that's basically, basically all they do at this place. That's you know pretty good size uh, installation. Uh, but we were out there and we were working with a tank group. I think it was the Big Red One. And we had to hook up. We had a night mission. We had to go hook up with some tank unit. I don't even know what the hell we were doing. I wasn't even in four. It was a whole platoon together. And we were just we choppered out, got dropped off in the desert floor, and we were supposed to you know walk to this certain coordinate and hook up with a tank unit. And from there, I have no idea. I don't even remember what we were supposed to do. This is like, yeah, this is 89, so it's been quite a while. So we got uh, dropped off, and we're walking through the desert. And uh, somebody sees a tank off in the distance. And they're like, you know, everybody get down. You know, so everybody's like getting down there, looking through, you know, night vision, trying to figure out what the hell the tank is. And they can't determine whether it's friendly or enemy. You know, from the distance and the way, you know, the night vision was working and everything. And so the lieutenant uh, asked me to go up and sneak up there and find out if it's enemy or friendly. And if it's friendly, make contact and all that. And so I take two guys with me. And we're wearing, you know, the, the uh, miles gear, the laser tag stuff on your helmet and everything. And we're carrying these little rocket launcher things called Vipers that... When you fire one at a tank, you have like a one in three shot of taking it out. It's like some kind of random number generator on the laser or something. I don't know exactly how it worked, but it, it wouldn't kill one every time, even if you hit it. You had to get lucky and get a kill shot. So we had two of those. And so me and these two guys go walking off into the desert and, you know, towards this tank to see if we can find out, you know, who they are. And we're getting closer and closer, and we're, like, looking through the night vision. And I like, still can't tell. I mean, we had, the, like, the training cards and the mock-ups and all that, you know, and we're doing like uh, vehicle recognition, you know, they hold up like a, a black silhouette picture of an airplane and you had to like, oh yeah, that's a frog foot or whatever. The same with tanks, you know, we had to be able to identify, but it didn't do no good. We were out there looking and it was like, I can't tell if that, what the hell that is. You know, we just couldn't make it out. <laughs> so we kept walking, kept walking. It's the middle of the night, it's dark as hell. And finally we got to where we were really, I mean, we could throw a rock at it. We were... I mean, just, I mean, throw a rock like this and hit it. We were really close, and we realized that's an enemy tank. So, boom, we all get down. We're hiding behind, like, this bush. They got these creosote bushes out there. You know, there's no, no real cover, nothing to really hide behind with these bushes. You know, they ain't going to stop a bullet or nothing like that. And you're not really even going to hide. You might not even be able to hide by, behind one during the daylight. So we're all huddled up behind this thing going, holy shit. You know, and we know they've got, you know, infrared or, uh, thermal imaging and stuff like that in these tanks. We're like... Why didn't they shoot us? You know, they saw us coming, you know. <laughs> and we're sitting there thinking about it. And pretty soon we hear, <clears throat> we realize the gunner up on top of the tank is asleep. He's asleep on his gun, just snoring away. So everybody else in the tank was asleep too, and that's why they didn't see us, you know, get this close to him. So now there's three of us. And we're well, it, it, they had a, like a 50 foot or 50 meter safety distance. They didn't want ground soldiers getting that close to tanks because you'd get run over. And if you got within, you know, if a battle was going on or something and a, a ground soldier got close, too close to a tank or a tank got too close to them, the evaluators, they're called OCs, um, they have a, what they call the God Gun. 
and they will shoot the tank and kill it, stop it, so it don't go any, you know, move around anymore, so it don't run over that guy. And that's a safety kill. And so we're well within, you know, safety kill range. And so I'm like, holy shit, you know, we need to, you know, get the hell out of here. And I looked off, you know, to one side, and way off in the distance, I could see a Humvee sitting there. And it was uh, one of the OC Humvees, one of the referees. And I told one of the guys I had with me, he was a new private, I can't remember his real name, we called him Ravioli, because his name was, you know, a mile long, began with an R or something, kind of Hispanic Italian name. <laughs> so we just called him Ravioli. Hey, Ravioli, go over to that Humvee, tell the OC that we're here right next to this thing, and we'd like to get a safety kill before these guys realize we're here and actually run us over, you know, trying to get away from us or something. So he's like, oh, and he takes off. And we wait, and we wait, and we wait, and we wait, and we still see the Humvee way the hell off in the distance, you know. Wait, and wait, and wait, and he just never comes back. This kid never shows back up, and we're like, holy crap, man, where's he at? Well, now the sun's starting to come up. We can see on the horizon that it's going to be getting light pretty soon. So me and the other guy are looking at we're like, man, we got to do something. You know, we're afraid to get up and try to run away. We don't want to disturb the guy that's sleeping on the gun. You know, so we're trying not to make any noise, and we're trying to figure out what to do, and we're like, screw it. We've got two of these rocket launchers. If we both pop up and fire, you know, we've each got a one in three chance. You know, that uh, makes our chances a little better. So if we, if we both fire, maybe we'll get the thing. So he's like, all right. So he gets one ready, I get one ready, and we do three, two, one, go. We pop up, he shoots his, and I shoot mine. And the light on the thing, it's got a light on it to tell you if you hit it or not. If you got, if you didn't get the, if you hit it but didn't get the kill shot, it would flash one time and go off. And that was a near miss shot. And so it flashes one time and goes off. Neither one of our lasers gave a kill shot. And we're like, shit. And that woke the guy up on top of the gun. So now he's screaming, wake up. He's waking everybody inside the tank up. And you hear the engine fire up. And we're, we're, we don't even move. I mean, where are we going to go? We're on the desert floor. You know, this tank's going to mop us. We just sit there. And I had this is the first time I'd ever been around tanks. And you see, you know, you see the tanks have that big gun. You know, it's like, you know, and it aims at you. No. This thing was like, <laughs> like barrel right in your face. <laughs> and they don't have a blank round that they fire out the uh, cannon of a tank. It's a, that they call a Hoffman device that sits back off uh, by, the, by the actual turret in the tank. The barrel sticks out past it. Bam, it goes off. I mean, and we're like flash of light laying back on the ground. And then uh, yeah, we're dead. <laughs> so then we hear other tanks in the area start firing up that we didn't know they were there. We start hearing engines go, you know, firing up, you know, all over the place. We look around, just, we're just surrounded by tanks that we didn't know were there. We only saw this one. And so they go taking off through the desert, and they're panning these great big spotlights. I mean, these things were bright as hell. They're just panning across the desert floor, sweeping. And you can see the platoon off in the distance. We're like, we're dead laying on the ground, you know. <laughs> we're looking back, and we can see, the, see them find the platoon, and it looked just like this. It looked like a bunch of deer in headlights sitting out there. <laughs> and they rolled over there and killed everybody. <clears throat> so we all regrouped and kind of sat on some rocks because we're waiting on a helicopter to take us back to the uh, dead, what they call the dead zone. We had to wait a certain amount of time and then get uh, reinserted back into the war. Or this little fake war that's going on. So we're all sitting there. <laughs> Looking out at it, you know, we're up kind of like on the side of a canyon type thing, you know, up against this mountain. And, you know, flat desert floor out ahead of us. And I see this guy. And he's, you know, running towards us. But he's not just, you know, jogging to us. He's like sprinting from one of them little bushes that I was talking about from one to the other. He's just hide behind this bush, hide behind this bush. And he's waving this way. Well, it's, it's Ravioli, the kid I sent off to go find that referee. And so we watch him come from a, I mean, way out there. And we're just laughing, watching him, you know, run from bush to bush. You know, because he's still alive. He's in the game. And so he's like, finally works his way all the way to us. And he's like... What's going on? I'm like, dude, sit down. <laughs> We're all going to go for a helicopter. <laughs> it's just one of them things you just had to see because it was just the funniest shit to watch him run from bush to bush. Like, you know, he's going to hide from a tank in the daylight. <laughs> it was right. I got some good stories about that kid. Me and him got along pretty good. So there you go. There's another uh, funny-ass Army story from Uncle Lou. <laughs> Take care, everybody.